So hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this meeting. Uh, today the question I will be presenting the um, topic. Um, so when you're ready, thank you. So the topics today, we will go over some of the cancer screening. We focus on cancer, uh, and we will uh, go over some other topics like uh, how to build a family tree uh, using uh, online tools. Um, and we will also watch Can you hear now? You can go ahead, uh, Dr. Like that. So I can start now, Dr. Nada. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Nader. Hi, everyone. Assalamu alaikum, salam. Very good. Assalamu alaikum. So, um, uh, today uh, we are going to talk about um, colorectal cancer screening. Uh, this presentation. Uh, we made it together, me, Dr. Haifa, and uh, Dr. Salem Shinawi. However, Dr. Salem, he will not, he cannot attend today uh, for the presentation and because of a personal issue. Mm -hmm. So I will do the whole presentation. So our today is colorectal cancer. Uh, we are going to talk uh, how can uh, colorectal, uh, can colorectal cancer polyp can colorectal polyp and cancer be diagnosed early? Why is colorectal cancer screening is important? What are the what are the methods for colorectal cancer screening? What are the guidelines for colorectal cancer screening? How to approach for people at average risk, increase or high risk? What are the advantage and disadvantage of colorectal cancer screening test? So, uh, can colorectal cancer uh, can colorectal polyp and cancer be diagnosed early? Of course, yes, can be. Screening is the method of detecting cancer or pre-cancer in people who are asymptomatic of the disease. One of the most powerful method or tool against colorectal cancer is regular uh, colorectal cancer screening. Screening can often detect colorectal cancer early when it's small and hasn't spread and might be easier 
to treat when it's detected early. Polyp can take as many as 10 to 15 years to develop into cancer. Therefore, regular screening can prevent colorectal cancer. With screening, polyp can be removed before they have changed into a cancer. So this just to this picture just to explain how it can be removed before it's there is it takes about 10 to 15 years to develop into cancer. So if you do colorectal cancer, colorectal screening regularly and in the correct time. So it could be just removed when it's just a small or just a large adenomatous polyp or even pre-cancer uh, polyp. And this time it's still benign. And when we remove it, there is no uh, chance. I mean, like, or we decrease the chance uh, of uh, uh, the patient get colorectal cancer up to 90%. Why is colorectal cancer screening important? Colorectal cancer is a leading cause of death. Uh, in United States and worldwide. When colorectal cancer is diagnosed at any early stage before it has spread, the five-year survival rate is about 90%. However, about 40%, four out of 10 colorectal cancer patients are found at this early stage, just about 40% who we can diagnose uh, people earlier. When, when, when the cancer is spread, I mean, spreading of the cancer outside the colon or rectum, survival rate will be lower. In the United States, about one in three people who should get tested for colorectal cancer have never been screened. This may be because of they are not aware of regular testing could save their life from the, from the disease or due to financial and health insurance coverage, coverage is issues. Just about this, uh, just want to uh, talk more about this point. Um, as a physician, uh, you know, like the health insurance for the preventive medicine, like the vaccination and the mammography and the bone scan, um, some private insurance or even whatever the insurance, they, they do it for free. I mean, like just, like uh, if you get, get when we get to uh, get to get be um, could be free. I mean, like uh, Doctor Nader, just correct me if I am wrong. But um, you know, what I know that this could be a screening even for even if it's like an early age. I mean, due to uh, history, so it could be uh, free. So this is some statistic about the uh, global cancer statistic. Uh, from the WHO, cancer is the third uh, cause of uh, cancers. And the mortality is the second cause of mortality after lung cancer. What are the options for uh, colorectal cancer uh, screening. There are two uh, you know, like, uh, categories <clears throat> divided in two main groups, stool-based tests, which like uh, we examine the stool, this, the <clears throat> this tests check the stool for sign of cancer, but they need to be done more often. For example, stool-based uh, tests are peak, uh, fecal immuno immunochemical test, GOYAC based fecal occult blood test, and stool DNA test. The other uh, group, which is the visual structural exam, these tests look at the structure of the colon and the rectum for any abnormal area. This is uh, this done either with scope or with special colonoscopy, CT uh, colonography, and flexible sig uh, sigmoidoscopy. If a person chooses to be screened with a test other than the colonoscopy, any normal test result should be followed up with uh, a timeline colonoscopy. So this 
So the guideline for colorectal cancer screening, depending actually in the age group and the past medical or history uh, of uh, cancer. But uh, the most important point is get screening no matter what you choose. Uh, average risk people. Who are the average risk, risk people? People are considered to be at average risk if they don't have past medical history of colorectal cancer or certain type of well, family history of colorectal cancer or medical history of inflammatory disease such as ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, potential risk of hereditary colorectal cancer syndrome such as familial adenomatous polyps, bulbosis, or Lynch uh, syndrome. From hereditary non bulbosis colo, uh, colon cancer. Personal history of being exposed to radiation, abdomen, pelvic, or total body radiation to treat rare cancer at any age. This is an important point, also. I mean, like uh, history is the important, history is very important. Taking history of your, from patient to, um, to know at what age exactly the uh, patient, I mean, like to start the uh, screening. So taking careful history, direct questions, just to make sure, especially for those people who presented with, um, you know, like um, unclear symptoms um, have been, you know, like, so like they have like bowel problem or something like that. Just you know, take a moment and take good history from those patients. Brush. <clears throat> approach for uh, uh, average risk people. So, so start regular screening at age of 45. This can be done for a sign of cancer in person said uh, earlier with uh, or with or with an exam that look for the colon or rectum, which is visual exam. People who are in good health and with life expectancy more than 10 years should continue regular colorectal cancer screening through the age of 75. People, uh, for people aged 76 to through 85, the decision of, to be of being screened uh, should be based on the person's and their screen, uh, their, uh, screen history. People over 85, should no longer get colorectal cancer screening. We categorize it by I mean like uh, age and history is most important. As we know, uh, the chance of colorectal cancer increases with age as other, you know, like breast cancer and prostate cancer. So also colorectal cancer increases with age. So that's why uh, it has been categorized depending on its history and the age. And this uh, two, uh, important things that cannot be changed. I mean, we cannot change the age or we cannot change, like uh, exercise, all this can be changed, so it can be modified. However, age and history cannot be changed. So that's why we uh, categorize it under these uh, categories. Uh, approach for average risk people. <clears throat> so stool beaker immunochemical using antibody to detect uh, to detect blood in the stool. This should be done every year. Highly sensitive, uh, based fecal occult blood test using, a chem uh, using uh, the chemical guayac to detect blood in the stool. Also, this one should be done every year. Uh, Multi-target stool DNA test, which is detect uh, DNA mutilation, okay during the early stage of cancer. This could be done every three years. Visual, structure, visual or structural exam of the colon and rectum, colonoscopy every 10 years, CT colon geography every five years, flexible sigmoidoscopy every five years. For the colonoscopy, it should be done, um, you know, like uh, with good preparation, so we can depend on it, you know, like with high visualization, and uh, good preparation so we can depend on it. So it's okay to be done after, if it's like negative to be done after, um, every 10 years in average risk people. 
people who are at increase or high risk. People at increased or high risk of colorectal uh, cancer might need to be uh, start uh, earlier, even before the age of 45, and be screened more often and get specific tests. Who, those people are uh, with, uh, who are these people? These people with strong family history of colorectal cancer or certain type of bulbs, along with colorectal cancer risk factor. As we mentioned before, the risk um, could be family, it could be history, it could be age, it could be um, lifestyle, it could be, um, you know, like such this uh, risk factor. Uh, personal history of colorectal cancer or certain type of bulb, or with history of inflammatory bowel disease, such as arthritis colitis or Crohn's disease. This could be, this we get, those people are under the, the category of uh, increase or high-risk people. Uh, known family history of hereditary colorectal cancer syndrome, such as familial adenomatous polyposis or Lynch syndrome. A personal history of radiation to the abdomen or pelvic area to treat prior cancer. So as we mentioned, it's crucial to take history and good history, careful history from your patient. People, people at increased risk for colorectal cancer, people with one or more, uh, uh, one or more family uh, member who have had colo, col, uh, colon or uh, rectal cancer, screening recommendation for these people depend on how uh, who in the family uh, had cancer and how old they were when it was diagnosed. Some people with family history will be able to follow the recommendation for average uh, risk adult, but other might need to get colonoscopy. So in those people, it's just you have to do the, uh, not any other test, we have to do least starting before the age of 45. People who have had certain type of polyp removed during the colonoscopy. So such like we just mentioned, uh, we might do, you know, like uh, we did this colonoscopy and the patient now has like history of polyp uh, uh, or uh, during colonoscopy and have been removed. So uh, most of these people will need to get colonoscopy again after three years. Actually, it depends about what they found exactly, is it what the type of and the size and how many bulbs they found. So all this uh, uh, counted. So we just, just to make sure that we will decide when we do the, uh, the chronoscopy again. But some people might need to get one earlier or late. or later than uh, three years, depending on the type, size, and the number of polyp. People who have had colon or rectal cancer, most of these people will need to start having colonoscopy regularly about one year after uh, surgery to remove the cancer. Other, uh, other uh, procedures like MRI, or a bronchoscopy with ultrasound might also be recommended for some people with rectal cancer, depending on the type of the surgery they had. People who have had radiation to the abdomen or pelvic or pelvic area to treat rare cancer. Most of these people will need to be will need to start having colorectal screening by colonoscopy or stool based test at any earlier age, depending on, on how old they were when they got the radiation. Screening often began five years after the radiation was given or at the age of 30. People, these people might also need to be screened more often than normal, such as, you know, like uh, at least three to five years. Oops, sorry. People at high risk, for colorectal cancer and also uh, people with inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's and arthritis colitis. These people generally need to get colonoscopy 
not any other test we should do the colonoscopy for the special people uh, starting at least eight years after the diagnosis with inflammatory bowel disease follow-up colonoscopies should be done every one to three years depending on the person's risk factor for colorectal cancer and the finding of the previous uh, colonoscopy people uh, known or suspected to have certain genetic syndromes uh, these people generally need to have colonoscopy not any other uh, we have to do colonoscopy for those people screening is often recommended of uh, of being at any uh, at a young age uh, possibly as early as the teenage years for some syndromes and need to be done much more frequently so we still here we have to take good history to know the past the family uh, history of the patient and such these uh, syndromes genetic is uh, could be run in the family so careful history from so needs to be done much more frequently specific uh, specific uh, specific depend on which genetic syndrome uh, the patients uh, have and other uh, factors. So this table, just to summarize, I mean, like uh, what we should do, or what uh, what we will start and what we will do. So the colorectal cancer screening for patients, uh, that, uh, that, risk, that increases the risk. So uh, for uh, or the limitus polyp, the test, as we said, mentioned before, that it should be colonoscopy, not any other test. Um, the, age of in, uh, the age of initial screening, depending of the gastroenterology consultation. Uh, uh, so the situation, so to, de to decide when to start the, um, when to start or when to repeat the colonoscopy. The frequency also depends on the, uh, you know, like the finding and the uh, what we found and the um, consult with the gastroenterology. People with inflammatory bowel disease, colorect, uh, Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, also those people need to be um, screened with colonoscopy. When we start, as we mentioned before, like at least, um, you know, like eight years uh, after the diagnosis, and then every one to two years, depending on the finding uh, of the previous colonoscopy. People with family history, first degree relative with cancer or advanced adenoma diagnosed at the age less than 60 years, or uh, first degree relative first degree relative uh, with colorectal cancer or advanced adenoma diagnosed at any age. Also, this, those people should be uh, screened by colonoscopy. So depending on the age, which is the first age, like uh, 40 or 10 years birth to the uh, earlier uh, age of the you know, like they have family history that has, you know, diagnosed at age of 40. So those, you know, like uh, the patient that who have family history, he has one of their uh, members diagnosed at age of 40. So the patient will be, um, and could be uh, finding, uh, depending on the finding, what we found, like it, the number of polyp, the type of polyp, how many polyp, I mean, all this, uh, depending on these factors. So we should decide when we repeat, how often we will repeat the colonoscopy. First degree relative with colorectal cancer or advanced adenoma, diagnosed at age more than or equal to 60 colonoscopy, the test we should do, the initial, it will be at age of 40, and the repeat depending on what we uh, what we found on the previous colonoscopy. First degree relative with advanced uh, serrated adenoma or advanced adenoma diagnosed at any age, colonoscopy is the most, uh, the, uh, the test we should do, uh, which is whatever comes first, as we mentioned before, age of 40 or age of the diagnosis. Also repeat depending on the finding. 
So now what are the advantage and disadvantage of colorectal cancer screening test? As we mentioned before, fecal, immun fecal immunochemical test. So uh, this is just to examine the stool. What are the advantage of this test? The advantage is no direct risk of the colon to the colon, no bowel preparation, no pre-test uh, pre diet or medication change uh, need to be changed. Uh, sampling done at home, and it's not uh, expensive. The disadvantage for this test is can miss uh, many bulbs and some cancers, can have false positive test result, need to be done every year, colonoscopy will be needed if any abnormality was detected in, the, in this test. Guayac based uh, fecal occult blood test, advantage, no direct risk to the colon, no bowel preparation, sampling also done at home and it's not expensive. The disadvantage can miss also can miss uh, bulbous and some cancers can have uh, false positive test result. Uh, test diet changes require this test require uh, breatest diet changes and possible medications such as non-steroidal and vitamin C and red meat are needed to be, I mean, uh, might be stopped before a certain time before the uh, doing this uh, test. Need to be done every year. Colonoscopy is required if the test result is abnormal. Stool DNA test, the advantage of this uh, test. Also no direct risk for, uh, to the colon, no bowel preparation. Uh, no preparation, no preparation, no pre-test diet or medication changes. Uh, sample uh, can be done at home. The disadvantage of this test can miss also uh, bulb and some cancers can have false positive test result. Should be done every three years. Colonoscopy will be needed if abnormal. This test could kind of still new and might not be covered by the insurance. So basically in the stool, whatever the, what we choose for the stool, it's non-invasive. I mean, there is no direct uh, risk for the colon uh, injury. So this is the, uh, the most uh, advantage for all, the, all of the stool-based uh, tests. The disadvantage, which is like it could be false positive, but if we just found any abnormality, it should be followed by uh, colonoscopy. So the colonoscopy, the advantage for colonoscopy, can usually look at the entire colon, biopsy and removal of polyp can be done at the time of the procedures, uh, could be done every uh, 10 years, but just to make sure that should be uh, good preparation for the colonoscopy should be good preparation and high visualization. And the colonoscopy should be the entire, uh, the, the entire colon up to the cecum from the ascending, transfer, and descending. So the whole, um, the whole uh, large intestine uh, can help find some other disease. Advant uh, disadvantage can uh, can uh, miss a small bulb. Full uh, bowel uh, preparation needed costs more. And uh, one uh, one time uh, based than other uh, form of the testing. Uh, sedation is usually needed. In some cases, people will need some uh, one to drive them home, and they miss day from work. And uh, small risk of bleeding, bleeding, bowel tear, or uh, infections could be happened because for colon due to the uh, procedures. CT angiography, visual colonoscopy. This advantage, uh, the advantage of this uh, test is uh, quickly can be done quick, safe. Uh, usually, see the entire colon done every five years. No sedation needed. This advantage can miss uh, small polyps. Uh, full bowel preparation needed, some uh, a small amount of red 
cannot remove well during test, colonoscopy will be needed if abnormal test, uh, if abnormal uh, still fairly, um, uh, if um, colonoscopy will be needed if we found any abnormality. It's also still uh, new and may not be covered by insurance. Flexible sigmoid sigmoidoscopy. The advantages uh, for this test is like it can be done quickly and safe, usually, does not require full bowel preparation or sedation. Uh, sedation usually uh, not used, does not require uh, a specialist to be done, and it should be uh, done every five years. This advantage, uh, not widely used as a screening test, look at only a, uh, about a third of the colon, can miss small polyps, cannot remove all polyps, may be uh, some uh, discomfort, very small risk of bleeding, infection, Uh, or about tear. Coronoscopy will be needed if we found any abnormal history and the age of the patient is the most important uh, point for the meaning of colorectal cancer. So we will continue to uh, because as we mentioned before, age so we have to review a patient at high risk for inherited cancer syndrome. So those people at from age 30 to 44, we should check their family history or even past Medical history, personal past medical history for Hello. Hello, Doctor Haifa. Yes. yes, can you hear me? I mean, like, yes, uh, yes, yes, oh. yes. Yeah, in the middle is uh, like your voice was breaking, but now it's not good. Yeah, I mean, did you hear all? I mean, all the slides or just in the middle, little bit like uh, your voice was not clear, clear, but now it's, any, it's missing or something like that. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you for letting me know. So I'm just about to finish, you know, just like yeah. So um, in the summary, as we mentioned, the uh, age from 30 to 44 years review family history to identify the patient at increased risk for colorectal cancer or at high risk for inherited cancer teen screening for patient at average risk and at increased risk age uh, from 76 through 85 years consider routine screening only for patients who have not been uh, updated to, uh, with the screening greater to the age of six, uh, 76 and or uh, who are healthy enough to undergo treatment for colorectal cancer is, uh, is detected and have a life expectancy of 10 years or more. People with 86 years and older, uh, and older screening is not recommended. 
So this is in uh, brief, you know, the history and the age of the patient is the most important uh, point, taking good history from, from your patient, starting from the age of 30 years uh, is very, very important. As we mentioned that before, that history, uh, personal history, robust medical history, and the age cannot be changed. It's not modified. So uh, these are the most important thing, other than the, you know, like the risk factor for colorectal cancer, which is like, smoking, alcohol, um, lifestyle, I mean, like uh, sedentary outside, not exercising regularly, have um, like fast food, whatever, all these things, all these things could be uh, modified. However, age and the history, personal or past medical history cannot be changed. So it's crucial to take a moment and uh, talk to your uh, talk to your patient, um, ask direct question about their past medical history, especially when they come to you with um, like, they have been complaining, you know, for a long time with like indigestion, constipation, bloating, all these symptoms. Just take careful history uh, from your patient. That's it. And thank you for listening. Uh, hello, guys. Uh, if any one of you has a question for Dr. Haifa, you can for forward it to chat box or any discussions are welcome. Uh, in that case, we'll, we could go to next presentation about family tree. Uh, Dr. Uh, Saba, if you're ready. Oh, thank you very much for that, Dr. Megdis, and good afternoon, everybody. Um, so uh, uh, the topic of my presentation today is on family trees, and uh, without any further delay, let's just, um, I'll just start into it. Um, I think so. Um, is my screen visible to everybody? Yes, yes. Perfect. Okay, so um, so yes, the topic for today's present for my today's presentation is family tree, and I'm Sabar Fan. I'm from uh, uh, Silver Team. Uh, the topics we're going to cover today is going to include the first, uh, firstly, introduction to a few terms, uh, which includes family tree and genealogy. Um, the value of family tree for family history uh, with regard to uh, any pa uh, family history with regard to fa family medical history. Um, that's going to help us understand a little more about genetic pedigree. Uh, we'll talk about different, we'll discuss a few examples um, uh, related to some famous family, uh, family trees. 
And then finally, we'll just practice using um, an online uh, support, uh, uh, an online program to uh, make your own family tree. It's called the it's it's a website that's um, that's fam uh, that's called Family Echo. So. Um, so, uh, uh, so when we, uh, so when we talk about family tree, what comes to your mind? It's basically a trigrammatic presentation, a representation that shows relationships between people in several generations. This over here is an example of a very basic uh, family tree that takes you back to almost uh, that talks that basically has uh, spots for almost six generations. And um, family tree can take you back, uh, it can go back in uh, to generations and can include descendants as well, as in this case. Um, this is an example of, um, this is an example for Donald Trump's family tree. Um, so right over here, we have Donald Trump. And as you go behind, you can see that um, he has his ancestors labeled here. So that's almost, four generations, they've gone four generations behind into his ancestry. And then when we talk about his descendants, uh, when we talk about his descendants, we can see he's got, um, he's just got one, uh, one generation in his descendant that's mentioned here. Uh, now we talk about genealogy. It is the study of family lines and ancestry to trace lineages. And what is the importance of studying? Uh, sorry about that. that I apologize for that, um, for the delay. Um, I had to settle down my daughter. Um, it's okay. Uh, so going back to our, uh, genu uh, our slide, what is genealogy? It is the study lines of ancestry and the ancestry to trace lineages. Now, what is the importance to study about um, ancestry and to trace lineages? It helps you in cases of adoption, in cases of separation separation from family through death or through divorce. Um, with regard to, uh, um, as a medical provider, the, it's most important for us in order to study and trace back hereditary diseases. And it also helps in establishing identity, especially in cases of certain royal families. And um, it's, uh, it's very important for them to have their um, lineages and um, ancestry, to trace down their ancestry in order to figure out their right to rule. And um, genealogy is also very commonly used in certain cultural and some religious practices. So overall, it's the, um, the study of genealogy is very important and has an impact worldwide. Now we talk about the terminology genetic pedigree. It is a, vis a visual representation of several generation in a patient's family, it shows how family members are related to each other and notes any medical conditions they may have, along with any other pertinent information. So it's um, to, to summarize what genetic pedigree would mean is it's an extensive diagrammatic representation of a family, uh, family medical history uh, for a patient. And you can trace it back to as many generations as possible. And that will give you a better understanding of any genetic abnormality that might be present in a family and how that would further express in incoming generations. So for an, exa for an example for that is hemophilia. And this is a very commonly and a very famous genetic ped pedigree uh, 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 diagram that has been used um, in the, uh, that has been used um, and it's uh, about hemophilia in the uh, royal family, British royal family. They have, um, they, they, they have been famous for carrying the trait for hemophilia and how it has pa been passed on to different parts of the different members of their family, which has unfortunately, which has in the past unfortunately resulted in um, deaths, uh, early deaths. And um, that is one of the reasons why the, their uh, genetic pedigree was created. So it gives us a better study of understanding of um, how a genetic disease is carried forward. So in this case, you can see squared is a representation for uh, male 
individuals uh, circular representation is a representation for female members patients who've been uh, members who've been colored completely through red um, they're uh, they're uh, they actually they have the disease they would express the disease and uh, individuals that are partially covered um, they're partially colored they are carriers so this kind of helps us understand how um, the disease would progress further into the generations now coming to our uh, ma making our own family tree so um, as i said that family tree is a, sim a simple uh, graph a uh, picture uh, diagrammatic representation of um, your own family and you can take it back to as many generations as possible depending on how info how much information you have available so we'll just try to um, go through this online um, uh, uh, we'll try to make our own um, uh, we'll try to make our own family uh, tree using this website and um, it's actually very easy to use this website. So for instance, if I was to make my own um, family tree, let's say my, uh, my name is Saba and um, I'm a female, we'll, we'll leave the details out. So we're going to talk about my family detail. Now I'm going to add my parents. Um, my father's name is Irfan and he's a male and he's living okay. And then... Um, uh, uh, we cannot see the if you are creating a degree for yourself. Is that what you said? Oh, sorry, I have to share my screen. Yeah. 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 Can you see it? Yes, now we are. Yes. So let's say in this case, I'm going to create my own family tree. So this is a website uh, that goes by familyecho.com. And um, when you click on it, this is the first page that comes up. You can sign in and you can actually save all your family tree. In this case, we're just going through, it's a tutorial. So we're not going to sign in or save it. Um, I'm going to make uh, my own family tree. My name is Saba and I'm a female. You can put in the details of it. Um, we'll, uh, we're going to skip that for, for, for right now. Um, now I'm going to add my parents. So for mother, um, it's going to be, oh. So we're going to, sorry, that was an error and that's, uh, I'm going to delete that part. So for the parents, I, uh, let's add my, mother's name she her name is Fakhra and she's not alive so uh, for my father I'm going to um, add his name and now for my I can add more siblings um, uh, let's just add one brother of mine um, and no yeah, sorry again I created So he's going to be uh, at a child, um, yes. And in this case, if I was to add my date of birth and my brother's date of birth, they, uh, the, the, the website automatically places them according to um, the age. But since uh, I did not add any of the date of births, I'm going to edit it myself and I can do that by um, making changes to it I can change the sibling order um, okay and then you can add um, partners as well uh, people you've been married to so in this case I'm going to add my brother's um, um, partner and um, a wife I'm going her name is Maha so So this is a very simple representation of a family tree. It can go on. If you have children, you can add those. If you have grandparents, you can add those. And this is how you can uh, complete your family tree. You can make it as extensive um, as possible, depending on how much information you have available. And in this case, I, ha I did make my own family tree. Uh, okay, I think I can't log into it right now. So um, in... So you can go as extensive as possible, depending on the information that is available to you. And um, um, in this case, let me try. Um, yes, this is. Is this, um, are you able to see my family tree? Yes, yes. 
Yes. This is uh, this is my extended family tree um, that I made uh, depending on the ages of my siblings, their children, and uh, this is um, this is a very basic pictorial representation of my family and how they would have, you can add more information to it. And this is a very good tool to add photos and uh, to add more presentations. You can add partners, you can add contacts, you can add different biographical details. And if you'd like, you can even share these details with anybody um, that is a part of this, uh, uh, that is a part of your um, family tree so um, this is a very um, easy and a convenient tool in case you're in, uh, in order to make your own family tree and um, so um, yes um, so are there any questions for me In that case, um, thank you very much for um, for your uh, for being so patient with my presentation. And um, I again apologize for the delay um, I had in between. And uh, if there are any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you so much, Shannon, about the presentation. This is great. Can you hear me well, guys? Yes. Okay. Yes, we can hear you. Sounds good. Thank you so much. So this is a great uh, tool if you want to use it for your family or uh, even cases. Sometimes we may uh, need to present some cases, so we will help you identify uh, who is in the family with this, let's say, DD or something. Great, thank you for um, If no questions, we can go to the next uh, part of the meeting. Uh, Dr. Abdullah would present about Microsoft. Assalamu alaikum. Hello, everyone. Uh, today, I'm so excited to show you how to use uh, the Microsoft uh, PowerPoint tools. There are some tricks and tips. You can see my uh, screen. Not yet. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, now. Uh, firstly, when you open your uh, app, uh, it's just a bit like this, blank. So firstly, uh, we wanted to add the new slide uh, from uh, click in the right, uh, the right. Uh, okay. On the right, uh, choose new slide or from the ribbon, uh, select new slide. Then you can choose any layout that you most valuable for you. Maybe a comparison, title only, title of the slide. Okay. New slide. When you want to add uh, text, you can just uh, press uh, or click on any area in the slide like this. Then my presentation. If you uh, wanted to add, edit the uh, text, you can select all the text and uh, go to home tab, then choose what type of the text you want it to be like, like this. You can also add the fault or make it as it's a, uh, Italian or put underline 
or you can also uh, change the color from here or edit uh, the size to be small or okay uh, the second tips we insert the images from the also from the home from the insert So sorry, from the insert here. I'm so sorry because uh, yes, you see my screenshot from the insert. Uh, you choose the picture you can add from your uh, uh, from the PC or from the online. Choose, select the picture. So when you press on the picture, you can change the size and also move it to be in the corner. Also, you can add another uh, picture from the insert, then choose picture, then insert. Okay. Uh, the third tips uh, we need to talk about the remove the background. Just press on the picture, then from the picture format, you choose uh, remove background like this there is some area uh, you want to remove it like this now uh, we choose keep changes the birth now without any background uh, the fourth uh, tips we can uh, add any transition or, or uh, let's us to insert another uh, element like the shapes. You can insert the shape from uh, insert tab and choose like rectangle or square from the insert, insert shapes like this. You can edit the shapes uh, when you press on it and Choose edit the shape, edit points, then press on the uh, corner. Then you can drag it down or drag it up. It is uh, a bit like this. Also, you can uh, choose. Also, you can choose the transition from the ribbon like cut or fade or bush when you press that will get you a preview before you apply to all the next tips uh, about the uh, use of the control key with drag to get the copy like this when i press the shape or press the type what i type then uh, press the key control with drag, just copy. Also, when applied on the this picture, control with drag will be too bad. Okay. The next tips about uh, when ha when we want to edit or add something on the shape, like click on right then choose edit text, then write anything you want beside. You can edit the size of the text to be more larger, change the size. Okay, the uh, seven uh, tips about when you have the list, we change the layout, 
uh, comparison. When you have a list like one and two, and there is some mistake in the list you want to edit, like one, two, four, three, Five. Five. Uh, as we see, there is uh, four uh, become before the three, which is mistake. We can select the three and uh, press on the Alt key with Shift and up arrow. It will be right like this. This uh, eight tips. Okay, now we uh, go to choose the design themes. When you want to change the design, go up to the ribbon and press on the design. Then it will uh, show you a lot of, of the design. You can choose any type of the design and that apply on all the slides. It will be like this or maybe like this. Okay, uh, the next uh, tips about uh, quick, access, uh, quick access toolbar from the above, uh, upper left corner it will be here. Customize your uh, quick access toolbar. You can choose any of the common uh, feature like open or save this file or link to the email. All also, you can uh, select the more commands to add something uh, to be appear above here, to be like access, easily to reach, like copy, you can add from here. Also, you can uh, remove, okay, which is, uh, yes, it is, uh, I added a report. You can remove it. You can remove anything you want to remove or add anything like cut. When we select the cut, add, then press OK. It will be appear a box like this. The next tips about the slideshow tricks. There is some tricks. When you uh, use uh, uh, PowerPoint uh, within uh, the slideshow, when you uh, use the slideshow presentation, if you wanted to uh, like uh, take some tricks, you can start from the, uh, when uh, press the key F1, it will uh, show you a lot of, of the uh, feature. You can uh, save anyone from this general shortcuts. Like the common feature, like uh, when you press the W, it will be board slide, white slide. When you press the B, like bl uh, black slide. When you press the, uh, again, it will be uh, refers to normal slide. Also, there is uh, some feature for use the control key with the P. It will be for pointer. Control. I'm sorry. Slide show presentation. Control with P. It will be like uh, bo uh, pointer for uh, draw, circle, line, anything you want. And you can use the E for eraser. Also, when you uh, press the control with I, control with I, it will be highlighted. Because, uh, yes, like, yeah, when you, yes, control with I will be highlighted. But it's just not uh, a beer well because uh, the color, not dark. Okay, when you also, uh, I wanted to add uh, 
new slide, you just uh, use the control key with N. Control with N or control uh, with M. I'm sorry. Control with M for new slide. Control with N for uh, open the new a new new one, new presentation. Now we go to uh, animation. How to animate any picture? We uh, use uh, or select this bird, Control X, and we put it here. Control D. Just we uh, we click on the uh, bird, then choose from the ribbon animation. More common one, uh, I uh, choose the custom bar. Custom bar, okay. Then you draw any uh, type of the movement you want to uh, apply. Then click the bed, then move. Uh, thank you for listening. That was uh, all my tips and tricks today. If there, if there are any questions, Thank you so much, uh, Professor Abdullah. This is excellent uh, presentation and tutorial of demonstration. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. So I'd like to add to what Professor Abdullah mentioned, and there are other features as well. Uh, one of them is uh, when you want to do presentation, let's say we have this slide, uh, you want to talk about it. Sometimes you might have some uh, ticker notes. Um, so if you go down here, you will have some sticker notes. Let's say I want to summarize this. I can put it in the sticker note. And here, instead of the whole sentence, uh, I want to say uh, the mean level okay, on the continent variable is different. Uh, for each group related to the others, something like that. And then I will mention that in my discussion, this time here, to make the slide uh, concise or uh, short sentences here. You don't want to uh, put uh, So sometimes we want to make the slides uh, abbreviated uh, and then uh, so when I'm presenting the sentence, I'm not reading this here, I will be reading this uh, sticker notes. So I will start this. Sometimes we want to know whether the mean level, so here the mean level if that makes sense. So this part is a sticker note or connecting uh, sentences uh, or uh, contrasting. Let's say you are uh, talking about ANOVA and T-test. So you will talk about T-test and then now you are talking about ANOVA. You will transition from T-test to ANOVA. So you will say, however, in ANOVA test, we will use more than one more than two groups, for example. So this will help you uh, elaborate and give examples uh, without putting them inside your slide. But the, 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 the better option or the better tool is the rehearsal or rehearse uh, with coach to it. So if you click on it, 
So this is when you press on the slide show, one option, one of the options is to rehearse with a coach. So if you click on it, basically it will create a rehearsal or record what you are going to say and then it will give you feedback. So let's start. If I click on start here. So, however, another test, uh, we will test the mean level on continuous variable in different for each group. And this group could be three or more groups. So we could use a descriptive statistic to compare these different groups. Using this sample, for example, and whatever. So this is how you will present. You will be talking about some of the sentences here, but you will add uh, extra um, sentences or words. So the coach will analyze So the court will listen to you, will record your uh, sentences, and then compare it to what is going here. Um, so if I click next, I go to the next uh, presentation. And after you're done, it will create this report for you. So basically, uh, it will give you how long you spent on each slide, uh, the total time the slides or the total time of the presentation and how many slides and then how many uh, you add some, let's say filters, uh, pillars. Uh, so uh, you notice here, I'm saying and, and, and uh, between the sentences when I'm thinking, but I'm not talking. So it will highlight what's your feeling or feelers what some people say and uh, some people say uh some people say you know so you're gonna repeat this and it will pick up whatever repeat it that you can focus on so that next time you will try to be cognizant or know to remove this when you are talking about uh when you're presenting slides then it will show you how many words per minute and this is the range. So they want you to be uh, continuously between uh, 100 to 150. So they don't want you to be fast. So you speak faster, people are not following you, or very slow, you will be monotonous, or people will be sleep during your presentation, if that makes sense. And then there are other um, variation of. Uh, like you want to use high pitch and low pitch, so up and down, uh, not monotone, uh, not monotone. Uh, originality, you want to avoid reading the slides, so you will add some uh, filling sentences or contrasting sentences or examples out of the, the slide itself. And then also it uh, will see if you repeat yourself. So if you are saying, you know, you know, you know, so you will also uh, be alert or aligned to that. So the, the, you will uh, be focusing on the topic instead of your um, feeling. So it, it's a good way of uh, Preparing yourself when you present a topic, let's say you have 12 uh, slides. Uh, if you want to write notes uh, so that when you are connecting these slides or the, you want to add uh, examples or you want to elaborate. So this speaker uh, notes will be either on a paper, uh, you will use it with, with each slide, you may have your notes. Uh, or you can add it at the bottom of the slide as a speaker note. When you present, 
then you can use this tool uh, as a way to improve. So you will present the presentation, see uh, how is your speed. You want to do it again uh, to see how is your tone up and down. Uh, and analyze yourself. Do you use a killer word like um, 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 or whatever? Uh, or you are repeating yourself. So, for example, for example, for example, uh, instead you might say, uh, for example, in one sentence, uh, for instance, in another. Uh, and then you will say, uh, uh, let's take an example, another example, something like that. So, this is how you use the tool for. Uh, Presenting with coach, with coach to, to analyze your presentation skill and improve your presentation skill. Any questions? If no questions, we can move on to the next uh, agenda item. Okay, hello everyone. Hello everyone. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Uh, hello everyone and good afternoon. Uh, <clears throat> my name is uh, Dr. Sahar Al Abbas, and today with my colleague Isram Hamad Osman, uh, we are going to walk you through uh, the mock questions interview. Uh, for residency program and uh, before we start I have uh, some um, uh, tips for the interview I mentioned it in uh, points I'm going to share the screen with you can you see the screen No, we cannot see the screen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's visible. Yes. Uh, uh, before any interview, <clears throat> there is uh, some uh, tips for the interview to to. Uh, uh, this uh, it can help uh, the first step is know your audience uh, this means that uh, you have to know uh, about the program that you are applying for and uh, this can help you uh, modify your uh, interviewing techniques uh, to that uh, particular program uh, the second tip is know your content uh, this means that you have to know everything uh, you wrote in your uh, ERAS application uh, the third uh, tip is stay structured and the last one is keep answers short and to the point. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, regarding the interview questions, uh, we can divide them into, uh, into categories. Sorry. Yes, uh, the interview questions, we can divide it into introductory questions. Uh, those, uh, those questions to uh, comfort the applicant and ease the interview. Uh, the questions are like uh, asking the applicant about uh, himself, about the weather, and um, about the city if he came uh, to, to, for his uh, interview in another city and so on. And uh, the other uh, category is co uh, called uh, core questions, like uh, those are the general questions like, tell me about yourself, why you choose this uh, specialty, why this program, and so on. And the third category is, uh, our, uh, third category is red flag questions. This, uh, these questions are like, like uh, academic questions. Uh, if you, uh, you have... Uh, if you have low scores, but you mention it in, in your application, or if you have uh, clinical gaps, um, 
uh, if there is no research and and uh, and you are applying for a research job or something like this and the the fourth category is behavior and questions like uh, how how you deal uh, with stressful conditions how to deal if uh, you have a conflict in uh, with uh, some of your colleagues or at work and the last one uh, is about the health system differences between uh, your country and the uh, United States. Okay. <clears throat> uh, now we are going to start uh, our uh, mock interview. I will be uh, playing the role of the program director, and my colleague Isra will play the role of the applicant. Okay. Uh, hello, Dr. Isra. Nice to see you, and thank you for coming in today. Hello, Dr. Sahar, nice to see you too. Uh, thank you for this opportunity um, to interview me today in your program. I hope that my quality that I will present to you today will uh, make me a good fit for your program. I am looking forward to be part of your team, and I hope this interview will be entertaining for both of us. Okay, thank you, and uh, I wish you all the best. Okay, now, now we have uh, about 20 minutes or so uh, to talk. Uh, I will go over a little bit about your uh, uh, experiences. Although I know about them, I read uh, your uh, application, uh, but I want, I have some uh, things to clarify. And I want to know more about uh, your experiences and your path to medicine. Um, and uh, we'll see what we are going to come up with, okay? And at the end, uh, I'm also available to answer all your questions, too. Okay, now let's, let's get started with the first question. Uh, can you tell me uh, more about yourself, please? Uh, okay, thank you for the question. I'm a doctor, Isra Muhammad Osman. I'm a Sudanese doctor. I have been born and raised in Sudan, and then uh, I pursued my, my medical career at the University of Khartoum. After that, I have done uh, my internship uh, also in Sudan, um, which is mm -hmm. a bit different from the United States internship. We do internship in different uh, clinical categories, like internal medicine, pediatrics, surgery, and uh, obstetric and gynecology. Uh, during my contact mm -hmm. of patient, I have seen the importance of uh, health advocacy and I have found mm -hmm. uh, my natural ability to be a caregiver, uh, my passion for medicine and uh, health education, uh, what shaped the person uh, in front of you today. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, that's why I'm seeking um, a higher education in the United States. Okay, that's nice. And uh, why you choose this specialty? Uh, well, I have found my interest in internal medicine while I was first year medical student. Mm -hmm. uh, at that time, I could be able to diagnose a case of hyperthyroidism. I have found uh, uh, internal medicine like a puzzle, like solving a puzzle by interpreting the symptom signs and investigation and to come up with differential diagnosis. Mm -hmm. uh, it's intellectually rewarding and stimulating. In addition to that, I'm a people person, so in interacting with, uh, with, with patients in, uh, in, in close contact, uh, it's very uh, it's very interesting for me, especially in medicine. Mm. Is uh, it's one of the specialties that you come uh, in close contact with patient and their families uh, for a long time. Okay, that's nice. And uh, why you chose this program? Uh, well, I have mm. uh, searched about this program in your website. I found the clinical education uh, mm -hmm. is. Is suiting my goal. Uh, as I'm uh, also um, I'm looking forward to, uh, to seek a fellowship of gastroenterology. Uh, I have found that this program is one of the top uh, centers of endoscopy in the area. In addition, mm -hmm. there is a uh, multiple of uh, well accomplished gastroenterologists. I think this will make me grow uh, better in this field. Uh, mm -hmm. In addition to that, the geography of the place uh, is very entertaining as I'm a sunny person uh, and uh, it's well known that uh, Florida is uh, a sunny place, it's one of the most sunny uh, states in the, in, the, in the United States. In addition to that, the diversity of the culture here in the program as it has mm -hmm. a good percentage of international medical graduates, 
I think I will be a uh, best fit as I'm coming from a diverse country like Sudan. Okay. Nice. Um, can you tell me uh, some of your strengths that uh, you bring into your medical school as well as some of your weaknesses? Um, thank you for the question, but let me tell you that everyone who uh, came here for this interview is, I think it's, I believe, uh, is well qualified and deserve this opportunity. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing that I, uh, I brought is that I'm easily adaptable person. Uh, in addition mm -hmm. that, uh, the, uh, I have the, the ability of critical thinking. Uh, and uh, I'm a detailed person. Uh, I have discovered that while I was working in one of the clinical centers in Sudan, uh, I could be able to uh, to detect a case of uh, appendicitis with a rare uh, mm -hmm. sites. And uh, I got accomplished from uh, one of the radiologists there as it was uh, a complex presentation and a rare site. So um, I think my critical thinking mm -hmm. ability, my adaptability, and um, detailed, detailed uh, personality uh, will make me the best um, candidate. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the weaknesses um, is that um, uh, public speaking, um, mm -hmm. as you noted, as me, you noted that when I get nervous, uh, I, I hesitate a bit and I work and, and I talk fast, but um, uh, I have watched a lot of vid uh, videos from TEDx talk. It helped me to mm -hmm. improve my ability of public speaking. So I got the, uh, the chance to present my research in two consecutive global uh, research conferences. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I think I'm working on it. Yeah, that's very good. Okay, uh, I have a question about, um, uh, tell me how would you deal if you notice, uh, if you notice a colleague uh, not performing well, or harm a patient? Uh, well, that's a good mm -hmm. question. I think I will uh, talk to him or her personally um, mm -hmm. and to sort out the, the problem and see what's going behind that and to um, remind him or her that our uh, patient health is our priority. Mm -hmm. uh, second, I will provide my support. Um, third, uh, if it continues, I will... Um, I will talk uh, anonymously to the senior resident mm -hmm. uh, and then I will follow his performance throughout if it improved. Uh, I will also provide my support. Uh, if it didn't, I think uh, we will seek a higher um, position like a program director associate uh, to sort out the problem. Okay. And how do you relieve the stress? Um, yeah, I think um, our our career as, as physicians um, give us a lot of stress, but I think uh, balancing life between family, friends, and work uh, help the kids the stress. Um, I like to walk a lot. I love uh, I walk for long distances. It decreases mm -hmm. my stress, and I like to talk with my close friends, uh, and I like also to uh, uh, to talk to my notes. I write a mm -hmm. lot, so um, it helped me to organize my thoughts and uh, alleviate my stress. That's so nice. Okay, and uh, where did you see yourself in 10 years? Uh, and yes, what, uh, what are your future goals? Okay, uh, as I mentioned, uh, I would like to seek um, a fellowship of gastroenterology. So I think um, I will be uh, doing that. In addition, I would like to continue my uh, clinical education and mentorship. Um, mm -hmm. I will be helping uh, other international medical graduates to uh, get into residency programs. Uh, so I think this is my future goals for now. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. And uh, what are you looking for in our program? Um, yeah, I found mm -hmm. the, the uh, clinical education. I think it will help me mm -hmm. a lot. I, I'm looking for uh, mental support and mm -hmm. guidance um, and uh, a good team uh, work um, uh, and a supportive environment uh, to explore mm -hmm. my uh, other qualities. Um, that's it. 
okay um, what what are the differences that you uh, that you that you know about the healthcare system in you in, in the states and in your home country uh, well in my home country um, the system is more of a British uh, system but with some modification according to the culture and geography um, I think that the accessibility of health services in Sudan is uh, a bit better in, uh, than the United States uh, um, and it's affordable the health insurance mm -hmm. is um, it's accessible and affordable for most of the people there um, which one of the issues that I have noticed in the health system in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, in addition, uh, I think the United States is advanced in the research and technology area. Uh, that's why I came here to uh, pursue my residency. Uh, this is the main difference that I have noticed. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, do you have any questions for me? Uh, mm -hmm. Well, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, mm -hmm. I just yeah, have so. one question. Um, uh, do you really update your, your educational system according to the resident, resident feedback? Like, uh, do you uh, do uh, yearly surveys or uh, get a feedback from the resident, then you apply to their system? Okay, that's a good question. Thank you. Uh, actually, uh, <clears throat> we have uh, multiple meetings uh, throughout the year. Uh, we meet the, uh, the residents, the old uh, residents, and discuss uh, uh, some of the some of uh, the feedbacks from uh, that we receive, and uh, we work on um, we change some things in the program, and uh, we modify some of them. Um, even we add. Uh, uh, new programs to like uh, programs to relieve the stress uh, uh, work stress and uh, I think uh, I suggest that you check our website uh, to know more about them thank you so much yeah yeah do you have any other question no thank you you're welcome I'm looking forward to hear from you okay thank you by this uh, we come to the end of uh, our interview Thank you again for coming and uh, wish all the best uh, for you. And uh, we're gonna send you uh, an email for uh, about the interview. Thank you. Okay, thank you. The okay, bye, have a good day. Thank you so much, uh, both of you. Now uh, we will open the floor for any comments, any feedback, any suggestions, any areas uh, that we think uh, the candidate can improve on. And I'm going to start with uh, you this far. Do you feel you have any reflection, any feedback to yourself? That you can improve on. May I ask question to another, please? So when 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 uh, we do this activity, uh, one of the things that I start with is uh, I will ask you uh, the candidate. How do you feel about this uh, encounter? How do you feel you did? I think it's stressing and um, we will always try to uh, perfectionize it, but uh, some coaching might get um, out of preparation. So I think we should always be ready for any question. Uh, a preparation um, makes it a lot better. Um, and that's it, I think. It is great. Thank you. So we have to uh, uh, Baba, go ahead. Thank you very much, Doctor, and thank you so much for the wonderful presentation. 
Um, it was definitely. Uh, Dr. Nadir, I actually wanted to ask you um, a question regarding the interview. In case of situational interviews, um, in, in sorry, scenario um, scenario based questions that um, the PDs uh, usually do ask. Is there a pattern you uh, you personally think um, we should follow, or that's something uh, that that that's better to follow? Because um, I've noticed whenever um, whenever I've been asked to uh, to talk about any situational question or in a in a or, or talk about any scenario, I tend to uh, use a lot of words and I tend to uh, make it very long, which I believe by the end it gets boring and it kind of loses the value of content so i was hoping if they, if you have any tips on how to answer those so uh, that's a good question so it depends on the questions that they uh, ask you uh, so one thing i want you guys to focus on is you try to identify two pieces or three pieces in your answer uh, so that it's not going to be uh, lengthy uh, or boring for the listener or the program director or anyone who asks the question. So think about it as uh, part of it will be repetition of the question, but reform it. So they ask you, what's your weakness or weaknesses? So instead of saying my weaknesses, you're going to flip that uh, around. Uh, you will mention. Uh, I think uh, there are room for improvement, and I think there are some rooms for me for or room for me for improvement. And then you can explain the body of the answer, what you want to say. Like in this example, as I have mentioned, um, public speaking. So you can say, in general, uh, every one of us might have some difficulties when they uh, want to speak publicly. Uh, and I found myself in this situation sometimes. And uh, to solve this problem, then you think about how you dealt or feel or you are planning to think uh, what uh, the improvement or whatever change that you want. Uh, it can apply same way for red flags. Uh, you did something, let's say, five years. So this cannot be. Uh, change, but you can change in the sense that during these five years, I did so, so, so. So you are trying to improve while you are waiting for the residency, for example. And the last part of your answer, usually I want you to do is you keep them at bay, uh, something that of interest for some of the program directors or interviewers. Uh, for example, you can ask or you can mention, uh, and one of the things that uh, I think improved my skills is the uh, telegraphy fellowship. Or one of the things that I found interesting is the project that I did and presented in one of the conferences. So this part will direct them to ask you more question about the telegraphy fellowship, or more question about your project, or more question about your conference that you presented. So you you divide to answer into two or three or four parts. The first part is you flip the question so that you repeat the question but not in the same word. Uh, second part is the body of the answer. Third part, what you speak differently is there a room for improvement, for example. And the last part is the part where you grab the attention or the interest of the interviewer uh, to something that you want to talk more about. So you tell them one or two sentences. So you leave it that way. So they will ask you, tell me more about that. Or uh, what happened with that? Something like that. So your answer will be limited, but you open the door for the interviewer to, or you guided them to go left or right according to what area you want them to ask you about. Uh, this is just a tricky uh, way of answering questions without being too long or too short, if I'm making them. Thank you, doctor. You're welcome. So any feedback, Munir, and then note. Uh, yeah, thank you. Correct. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nadir.
uh, thank you for the um, uh, the one who did the interview. I think Dr. Sarah, and it's very uh, actually it's very beneficial uh, interview for me. Uh, the point that uh, I need to ask about is um, what is the most important strength point uh, I have to highlight in my interview. The second question is how about the stress? Uh, stress relief. I mean, what is the proper answer for this uh, question? Uh, the last point uh, regarding the, the, the resources of uh, to prepare for interview. Uh, how can I find the resources? I mean, videos or something like that that prepare me for the uh, interview. And again, thank you very much for this uh, program, Dr. Nadir. You're welcome. So I'll, I'll, I'll uh, start by uh, going backwards. Uh, the last part of the question is how you want to improve or uh, how you want to um, see videos. So when we started the program uh, a few years ago, we worked on improving the presentation skills, the interview skills. So we have some videos. So if you go to the app, there are some videos there. Uh, if you click here, you will have some of the videos that we share. And if you go to some of the details, so let's say you hit all, browse um, all videos, and then you can search by interview or something like that. You will find some some of the videos uh, that we or if you click here, yeah, you will go to videos, and then you can see all videos, and then you can see the view. So we talked about this today, and fellows present some uh, some videos, uh, so. Last year in October, we had some. Um, so you will find many videos uh, as far as how you improve. Uh, the other part of the question, like uh, what's my um, or uh, what's my strength? Uh, everyone is different, so you pick on one or two of your strengths. So you can say, I'm a team player or I am a professional, I am uh, whatever you think uh, you will have as a big thing in your character or in your CV. And then you elaborate on that. Uh, it's better to give examples uh, when, when you're talking about one of these qualities. So if you want to say I'm a team player uh, and I'm a team leader, uh, if I mentioned during my fellowship uh, this program, I was uh, assigned to, to carry on with the task or with the project. I collected the information about my team members and then we carried on the whatever. I divided the task, I did this, this, or something like that. So you will show that you are a team leader or a team member uh, and you achieved and you finished the project on time, something like that. Um, if that makes sense. Uh, the question of the stress. Uh, the stress, is it the stress during the interview? Uh, yeah, one, one of the question is, uh, if you uh, feel stress during the work, uh, how are you going to, um, to deal with that? So that different ways of dealing with the stress. Some, some people uh, will go back home and listen to music, uh, watch different TV shows or maybe uh, soccer games or um, fun or pray or meditate. So whatever you think uh, relaxes you or you have some of the strengths back, you can mention that. And some of them might be hobbies. So let's say uh, I like painting. So whenever I find myself in a stressful uh, situation, I'm, I build up this, uh, so in fact, uh, to avoid uh, burnout, uh, for example, when I go home, I start uh, 
coloring or painting. So this relieves some of the stress in my life, something like that. Uh, so you, you individualize whatever you do to lessen the stress in your life. Again, Thank you very much, Dr. Nader. Yeah. Thank you so much for this answer. You're welcome. Now I can sign up. Can you guys yeah. hear me? Go ahead, Anaud. Okay, my only advice is to the one who was doing the interview. I think you sum it up in a very good way. The best way you can draw the attention of the person who is interviewing you or the residency program director is don't state or don't frame your answers in a very rigid way. When they ask you one question, try to leave some loopholes or some more attractive questioning strategies in that answer so that they will ask you more. So most of the residence program director, when you talk to them or when you ask them, they say that the interviewee can make the, the, the interview very easy for us if he puts like some details in the answer, which will invite us to ask him more. So whenever you answer the question, don't make it like a closed ended question. So in this case, uh, the, the residency program director actor was asking the interviewee why she chose the program and she was talking about the sunny weather about the uh, gastroenterology fellowship and other details so in those answers you can include some jot points or some achievements that will draw the residency program director to ask you more questions this way you can drag the attention of the person who is interviewing you to ask you more question one and you are unconsciously making him remember you when he ranks you so when you put some details that are not there in a regular residency applicant, that will immediately drag his attention or her attention to register your name or your interview in his or her head. So the best way you can do this is just when you are asking a question, answer straight to the point, but when you answer it, don't make it a close ended. When they say why you want to choose this program, you can answer in a two or three liner um, answers but you can plot some inviting questions in them too so that the person who is interviewing you will end up asking you more and more one and secondly the interview will look more of like conversation rather than a rigid interview or a tick box interview so then my only advice is whenever you are being interviewed don't make it rigid if it's rigid the interview will last 15 minutes and nobody will register your name or your application so just try to make it more friendly more of like a conversation rather than a job interview. And always try to leave one or two plots in your answer that will, that will invite more questions for the person who is going to interview. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. So um, can I ask a question, Dr. Nazar? Yeah. So um, my question was, um, as we all know, like the most expected question is the first one is like, tell me about yourself, which is mostly asked by the program directors in the beginning. I wanted to know like what exactly um, should be prepared for this question? Like, do we have to follow some sequence? Like first we should talk about our personal stuff, family, or where we come from, and then what should be the middle part, what should be the ending, um, like when should we, uh, and what exactly should we talk about, because um, they say that, tell me about yourself, you don't have to keep telling like what all you have done in terms of education, um, not to make it like, like a CV, because we have already submitted the CV to them, they know what all we have done. So what exactly uh, should we prepare this question? Like how and uh, what points should we include and what should we like put more emphasis on? So uh, again, uh, it's an interesting question and it's an important question because the first question they ask you, uh, you should uh, set, set up all the tone and uh, let them remember you as the uh, not uh, mentioned. So it's a, an opportunity for you to shine and uh, be prepared for the more questions that are coming down the road during the interview. Uh, so it's very important to uh, personalize that uh, answer, uh, its common answer. Um, make it attractive, but personal and different from others. Um, like everyone will say, 
I am uh, so and so. I was born in this and I graduated from this. And uh, so don't repeat your resume in a sense that um, monotonous, or they can get it from the TV. Add, if you want to add, go that route, add some stories, add some unique things, add some um, jokes about you. So one of the first class um, fellows, his name was um, better. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so uh, when he joked or when he answered this question, I think he mentioned uh, my name is uh, uh, Mohan Ombaba, but they pronounce it uh, Ombaba or something like that, mm -hmm. like Obama, the president, Obama, something that will uh, break the ice and at the same time, they will recognize something different about this person. Uh, so your answer uh, can be, tell us about yourself, you go over uh, your story, but in a, a unique way. And every one of you is different, so I'm not gonna tell you what exactly you want to say. Uh, if you want to look at the videos, uh, there are more than 12 videos uh, here, um, similar to what you are asking. So some volunteers tell us that match to other programs, they share their videos. So they will say, my first question was this, and my answer was this. So you can pick and choose and see how you can tailor uh, some of these answers to your story. And at the same time, we had it from our fellow so much as well from batch one, batch two, and batch uh, three. So uh, you can look at the videos and uh, try to change it the way you think you find it. But thank you. And um, do you? Uh... Do you like suggest that we should um, also talk about our hobbies or interests in this question, or we should not and let them ask us uh, this question about hobbies? Yeah, you, you can uh, you can add that part. So again, it's a personalized part. So uh, if you want to add it, uh, no 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 problem with that. Uh, as long as it's unique. Um, some um, people might be interested in cooking, for example, but most of the hobbies, especially for women, is uh, I like cooking. So cooking by itself is a nice thing, but it's not unique. So if you want to make it unique, you can um, make it personalized to you. So I like to uh, cook, but I would like to, um, let's say, of Japanese food, mm -hmm. something that's out of the blue, or uh, Chinese food, or um, North America, South America, whatever uh, type of food. Do you like uh, sports? So what kind of sports do you like um, to do or to watch? Something that um, might be of interest to the listeners. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. That was helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Director Sahara and Isa, for this great uh, uh, mock interview. Uh, You're so, welcome. Uh, I think you did great a uh, while. Um, and then, say now, Tanya, um, go ahead, while. Hello, Dr. Nanir. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Sarah, um, and Sahara, for the interview. Um, my question is that how to uh, approach like the question uh, they said uh, as an old medical graduate how you keep yourself up to date with information I believe this is uh, someone mentioned that as one of the previous interview question that they got so how to handle these kind of questions thank you You want to answer that, uh, Sahar, or uh, Isra, or uh, uh, I think you can mention uh, the progress, um, and you can highlight uh, why you uh, are a bit late, but in a good way, like how it helped you uh, um, get into this point. 
and uh, how you uh, were following the evidence-based medicine during your um, clinical experiences. Um, and that uh, you are updated. You can mention examples for uh, to elaborate more. Um, um, I, I got an advice that it's not necessary to, to mention the struggles that you were facing, but I think it, it, if it shaped you in a better way, and if it helped you to uh, Im improve your skills, you can mention it. Um, I think that's what I know. Thank you. Thank you. Exactly. So you want to mention that. So they know some some of the uh, candidates might uh, go or because of family uh, disease or uh, because they come here to study for the uh, exam and they have kids and so on. So that different things in life uh, that may take you away from medicine. But now you decide to come back to medicine, or maybe you work in a different country for a few years. So all this and you can summarize, but what they want actually to know is that you are prepared and you are ready to join their team. You are not uh, rusty. You are not, uh, oh, I did this 10 years ago. Um, so I don't remember. They want you to uh, keep yourself up to date. So mention whatever activity you did. So you are joining this uh, fellowship, mention that uh, in the last year, I joined this fellowship and we are learning about Sirachi, who is getting um, every week a lecture about the clinical access. In the past, we have uh, in general, like grand rounds in, in the internal medicine or neurology. You can mention that if you did an observership or an um, externship, you mentioned that I joined this clinic, I did my internship. Uh, and I learned uh, the whatever EMR uh, that's in uh, that place, uh, something that uh, I encounter with uh, different uh, um, patients uh, from all walk of life, something like that. So you 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 mentioned although you the president you graduated many years, uh, you still are trying to get up to date and you do your best and uh, clean a wide or any aspect that you are mature now, uh, you are able to communicate well now, uh, you are accustomed to the culture here, if you are in the state, um, you know, the population in your area, something like that. So you try to think it as a positive, what areas you improve, and every part will be, uh, your, your answer will be different from one another, but this is the general approach. And again, there are some videos of uh, fellows previously for match and some other fellows from uh, other programs. Uh, they share their experiences and how they are handled that uh, question. So uh, I advise you to look at these videos when you have time. Kulu, um, Kulu mentioned that uh, Don mentioned Then try to be uh, for you. Well, go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, uh, you hear me? Yes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Nadia. Thank you all for those uh, nice presentation and uh, great tips. And I have a question. If you're in your application, uh, you have a gap for quite some time for taking care of uh, one of your family member, like your parent or your son, and it take you some for quite some time uh, taking care of ill, Ill patient in your family member. 
it's okay to mention that in your application or you think that would be uh, is, uh, not a good idea to uh, add it in your application for filling the gap in your application? Is it uh, my question is uh, sound, sound clear? Yes. So uh, again, uh, try to put it in a positive way uh, that although my experience um, of my graduation was a few years ago, if I mention it in your personal statement, uh, that I took care of or whatever family uh, member or anything in your life, uh, you spent a lot of time uh, apart from medicine, practicing medicine, for example, uh, but now um, trying to get ready to go back to medicine. So what did you do differently um, than uh, other people, for example? Many will go uh, practice something different. Uh, when I came here, I was a taxi driver for some time. So uh, I'm not going to mention that I'm, I'm a taxi driver. I, I say uh, I spent some time preparing for my exam, but I am now doing this, 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 or recently I did this, this, this. Uh, as I mentioned, let's say uh, you joined this program, the uh, theoretical research program. So I'm learning how to do a proper research or whatever. Uh, you highlight that, uh, or you did a round with uh, a neurologist. So you, you mentioned. Uh, I went to the clinic with this neurologist and I learned a lot about whatever. Uh, and I saw patients and I, whatever. So you try to highlight some of the things that are um, important to the program that uh, you know that you are ready to publish by July. By you know the EMR, you know the clinical aspect, you know the clinical knowledge, uh, you are not trusted. Um, so if you want to mention some of the reasons in your personal section or your I'm not sure in the application there is a gap there. Uh, so this, you can add it, but read it. Uh, because they know uh, most of the graduates who are far from the like five years point. They have reasons for that. So they are not asking for the reason itself. They are asking about what are you doing to get back to medicine? Uh, what did you do to improve yourself, to prepare yourself, to get ready? And when we hit you, you will be a good team member and uh, be our patients and uh, pass the board exam, for example, for them. So this is the important part, and to understand the question, why they ask the question, it will help you answer the question better. Tanya, and then Ms. Park, go ahead. Okay, yeah. so, good afternoon, Agri, thank you. I had one more question, uh, which is like uh, for people like who are done with the, all the steps and um, you know we tend to forget things. So is there any book, a short book or, or any good book you suggest us to follow, you know, just to keep up to date with the knowledge? So there is a uh, book, if you're going for internet in general, uh, current uh, what current Any students follow or you know anything that which is small and you know precise and we can follow through to just remember things. Yeah, so there are some uh, books that you can uh, current practice and management in medicine, something like that, and then medicine. Uh, one of the books, uh, some of the books might be five minutes. Uh, book. Um, but I would suggest if you go over uh, our own uh, recorded um, meetings, you might have just the first half an hour of each meeting, uh, mm -hmm. you will get some of the knowledge about 
uh, let's say, geriatric medicine. So mm -hmm. we will talk about different topics on geriatric medicine. So if you keep up to date with that, uh, some parts might be applied to the internal medicine in the other. Uh, mm -hmm. And you can keep up to date with that. So uh, one of the things in the future, uh, we will add, uh, in the app, the um, grand round in internal medicine. So uh, every week or every two weeks, there is an um, internal medicine grand round here at MSU Pero. Uh, so they will uh, be uh, one hour on Tuesday uh, uh, talking about topics in internal medicine and the app today. Uh, also in neurology, uh, usually on Friday. So you can also join this remote uh, meeting. So you can search for other similar meetings. The other option is to look for CME programs or um, lectures or videos that can also keep you uh, up to date. I can share some of the videos that I get, um, which also uh, give you some uh, up to date information. Uh, some of them might be related to some products, so it's not like it's free for you, but um, and they have some support from other marketing companies. Something like that. So. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, that was helpful. Thanks. All right. All right. Go ahead, Esther, uh, and then Asana. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Nasser. I have a question about this fellowship. I have joined recently, like a month ago. Uh, I'm asking how can I make the best use of it uh, during my interview on my ira CV application? Uh, how can I highlight it uh, in my CV? This is my first question. My second question, I, I have been working as a general practitioner in one of the outpatient clinic in Sudan. Uh, how can I make it related to internal medicine as I'm applying for uh, internal medicine residency? Thank you so much. You're welcome. So for the first question, I'm going to share you with you. This is a link on the chat. Uh, basically, uh, it's uh, I can share the screen as well. So this is the document from uh, previous fellow. So you will go to the box and uh, you log in there. Uh, it has some uh, samples of the uh, previous fellows to batch they share their uh, application so you can look at their example and see if you want to tailor or modify your own application as well as the personal statement so they uh, um, they kindly share this uh, so that you can benefit from their own personal statement so you look at these and you can modify your own according to what you want to buy Osama, go ahead. Uh, uh, hi, everyone. Um, uh, thank you, Dr. Nader, again. Actually, uh, my question is um, uh, to some extent the same like uh, the previous question. Uh, it's about ERA's application, adding the uh, this uh, fellowship to ERA's application. Uh, my question exactly. Uh, beside adding it to um, the experience section or maybe the statement as well, uh, can we add it to the higher education or postgraduate training? And if so, which one is uh, the suitable place, the higher education or postgraduate training? Well, I think it's, uh, it can be any place, but postgraduate training might be a better like uh, and it's coming better for you. So post graduation, because you already graduated, you already uh, some of you practice medicine. So it's a post graduate. It's uh, focused only on the clinical research part of geriatric medicine, but also the clinical part as far as the lectures or the slides that we share about the clinical uh, of geriatric medicine. Thank you so much, Dr. Mark. You're welcome.
Thank you so much, everyone. Any updates as far as the project ideas or uh, questions regarding the fellowship? I'd like to thank all the presenters from today and the team. And uh, well done, uh, everyone. So, Sahara and Isra, thank you so much uh, for the mock interview. You look great. Uh, so, I think one of the things that you want to also practice uh, is now I'm talking to you with my face only, but now when I use my hand, uh, it gives you a better uh, understanding. Uh, if I say, oh, you did very good, but there are three elements that you missed. So the first one is this, second one is this, but whatever, then you will have more attention to my body language. So uh, when you use the camera, for example, uh, I want you to practice your body language, your face, your smile, uh, your light. Uh, you want to use some light uh, so that you will be uh, good on the camera. But if you want to use your hand gesture, uh, your other body language might be also some skill that you want to add. You want to minimize the filling sentences, like I said, when People say, you know, you know, you know, you want to remove that. Uh, you want to remove that. Um, um, um. So if you are answering a question, uh, don't repeat yourself. Um, um, um. Uh, if you are prepared to the answer, you can pause. So let's say uh, I want to talk about my weaknesses. So I'm going to rephrase the, the, the question. I say, um, it's an important question, uh, and I think there's room for improvement for everyone. Uh, for me, I found that my weak area or the area that I want to improve on, and then you talk about that, whatever. So you notice I'm pausing myself or I'm silent for a minute or two, and sometimes you use that when they ask you a complex question. So let's say they ask you uh, um, two plus two plus two plus two, something like that. So you are not going to say eight. You want to show them that you are thinking about the process. And so you say, okay, so two plus two plus two plus two equals eight. And this is the reason why. So you can use also the pausing um, in addition to your body language, something like that. So there are different ways of um, conducting yourself or um, the truths of the interview. But I'd like to thank everyone um, for this informative session. Any updates as far as? If no, we will talk about next week. So uh, I'll update the app with the topics for next week. So hopefully that you will be ready. Let me know if you have questions. Uh, send me an email or text or call me. I'd be happy to answer. And I wish you all the best. Thank you, everyone, uh, for joining us today. And thank you for those who will come later to look at the recording. Have a wonderful day. Oh, Matilda, thank you, Dr. Nader. Uh, we will we'll stay with you. Thank, Thank you, you for the best feedback for Nader. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much, Dr. Nader. Thank, Thank you, you so Dr. Nader. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nader. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Nader. Um, I was having problems to unmute myself. Uh, that's why I couldn't unmute earlier. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Go ahead. Yeah, so yeah, uh, regarding to our blood pressure app, so uh, we quite move in the app. The only thing we need to add is just information regarding medication, as well as uh, regarding the cha uh, chart and diagram for the blood pressure readings. Um, I received your email and um, we went over it, me and Dr. Amel, and um, we have like uh, some question regarding that. So. We're looking forward for your help, but uh, I greatly appreciate Dr. Amal and all of my team. Like we, did, they did really great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Nadi, for this opportunity. You're welcome, no problem. And you want me to work with you on some of the aspects? 
or you can uh, work and then see if there's any if the computer is not and then you can take it out. Hi, Dr. Nader, how are you? Hello. Uh, uh, so, Alhamdulillah. So uh, we've been trying to incorporate the chart, but it was very tough. Uh, I couldn't find a way to make a chart inside Codular. Uh, like I tried to make something called extension. Uh, inside Codular itself, there is no nothing uh, like a feature called a chart inside the uh, platform itself. So we have to get it from outside, from another uh, like website. It's called an extension, importing an extension into the Codular. So I imported the extension and I followed the exact same steps from a YouTube tutorial, but it didn't work. So we're stuck for here. The graph or is it for the graph? Uh, yeah, for the graph. Okay. Um, so in the app itself, you already save the information as far as the solid the solid the solid, the solid board, let's say a, a week. Is that correct? Yes, so we were able to make uh, the saving the uh, like the readings, but uh, the readings we we could not make something to translate those readings into a chart view. So this was the difficulty. Can you show me the screen? Can yes, sure. Screen? Just a minute. Yeah, sure. So that's it. Um, just let me take you to the screen. So here, uh, where should I put my, like, I should put my chart here, but uh, I didn't, like, I deleted the extension because it was not functioning, but I can import oh, it again. Data? Where, what, what, where is your data? Okay. Um, I'm not sorry. So Dr. Nafisa, can you help me find the page? Because I forgot the name. The name for which one? The one for the- uh, The one picture. that contains readings? the readings, yes. It, it was my profile. Okay. So yeah, this one. And- um, where do you get the reading from? So, uh, yeah, so this one is the summary page. We didn't create the page for the readings yet, but this is the summary page where the readings are going to be saved here after the, page, the patient enters all the readings for systolic and diastolic for each day. We create it for one week. Um, so the other way around, if you go to the input, page where when you have your info. Um, like the empty page I just viewed. Let's see this one. Uh, the first page where they enter their let's say. So it should be here, but we didn't create anything yet because we wanted to figure out how the chart works. And then so we can the put. So at the beginning, Dr. Nadir, we, we actually, we entered, the, we created the page for the reading itself, but uh, we would like afterward we to save this reading on the summary page. So when we did that, we figured out the summary page is gonna be saving only one reading per day and uh, seven readings for what one What is that limitation? Where is that limitation? Why you Sorry? want it when when we the limitation of one week where where does that come from? For one week, that's gonna be for the uh, go to the my patient profile patient profile. So that's gonna be the summary page, which is that should give us like summary about the readings over the past week or over one week. Okay. So, so it should be yeah. like that. Okay. Let's let's. Um, I'm going to share the screen and then oh. um, I can just explain it one, one, one. Um, so oh. when you go to sheet, you know, this step for um, demonstration. So 
this will be your let's say the screen where they have the reading that they will enter let's say uh, the solid blood pressure the solid pressure. so you have in your um, app you have something something like this supposed to where they will put their today need uh, reading 120 and then um, Do you have text like that? Are you following uh, me? Yeah, Dr. Nadir, sorry, I was talking, but I was mute. Uh, uh, so we yeah, we did not uh, create a page like this yet. We created this page at first, but then we deleted that. Uh, because just we wanted okay, to so, understand so, how the chart works. Yeah. So let let let's say, and this is the screen where the user will input their whatever so, uh, reading. So this is just a display for the user, and we want to get the input. So these two cells, and when they hit another cell, they um, save. When they hit save. If you go to a table, where in the table we want to set um, we want to get the let's say so uh, a table with four columns. The first column is the date. As soon as we click here, the date will be shown here. And then this will come to the solid, this will come to the solid. So at the background, this is not for the user, this is for the app development um, backstage, like behind the scene. So whenever they click here, next day, it's gonna be 123 over 90. So when they click here, second, they will come, and then same, 123 will be here, and Mike will be here, something like that. But the username, let's say, and then will be listed. So this is how you think about how you can save the data in a table and the background, or a variable where each time they hit save, it's gonna be listed in, um, something like that. Some time or sometimes they 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 use it as an array. They call it. So uh, I will add variable uh, blood pressure readings. So in this array, gonna set one twenty three ninety. By something to be the variables for the solid. And but saving Dr. Nadia, saving variables that's going to work in Codular without using the spreadsheet. Uh -huh. So you have to connect. The spreadsheet so I think the solution to this uh, is you have to connect to uh, something called Firebase or Airtable, which are databases that are external to Codular, uh, databases that can store like a million of, of values. Like we cannot use the database that is inside the Codular itself because it's limited. So we have to connect, uh, the chart itself should be connected to the Firebase. Yeah, there is one, uh, I think it's called mini database or something like that, um, tiny. Yeah, the tiny know, database, uh, but database. I don't think, yeah, yeah so the tiny database, sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Go we ahead, Dr. Nader, I'm sorry. Small table. We can create a small table where the 
the user will save this data because when you want to create the graph, you want to get get the graph from the data here. Yes. So if you save it as only one variable there A in your app, uh, I, I think you are limiting yourself. Yeah, so I think the tiny database uh, that is inside the Codular, unfortunately, is very, very limited. Like it can save only one variable. And then when the user enters a variable, it's going to delete the previous one and store the new one. That's why we have to connect to Firebase. I tried to use Firebase on my INR application because I remember that I wanted to create a chart as well. But uh, to be honest, it was tough. And maybe I was at that time studying for my USMLE exam. That was uh, my like my brain was everywhere. So, but now I think I have time to do this, and I'm going to work hard on it. Okay. I'm going to find a way. Yeah, there there's supposed to be a way. Uh, I think it's just a matter of connecting the database, as you mentioned. Uh, so you will enter the variable. Let's say the user, the date, the the solid guy solid. If you can connect this uh, to the table, then what you need to do is in the table itself, create another column here. And I don't know how to say, let's say um, there is a way of, of um, column X called so I want to get all column edge here. So it's gonna be 120, comma, 123, comma, something like that. So there is a way to collect the information in one column edge in one cell. So each time the, the person will uh, enter something, it's gonna be somewhere here. If we can do that, this is the next step. So the first step is connecting the user with the data to a table. If we can collect that, that's step one. And then step two is to get this into uh, one cell, one column, one cell, something like that. If you get that, then we can manipulate it to the image that I shared with you. So all this information can be manipulated in, in, in the graph that we were talking about. Uh, I, I sent the graph with the image. We change the small. So for us, instead of uh, instead of using commas, so we will change this. So we will change the comma with the something like percentage. T20 and something like that. So in the graph, when you do that, it's gonna be reading this is the, the first one, this is the second one, this is something like that in the, the design of the graph. So this we can manipulate this easy if we collect the information. Okay, so, so let's work on getting the database first, how to set the data from the user into a column uh, where they set the information systolic diastolic and data on the user, for example. If we collect all this, then we can talk the next step is converting that into the graph data. So that's when we apply to the graph. It's going to be just reading this part and setting it with the graph, and it will show the uh, graph. Yeah, part. so I think the, the most difficult step is to overcome the obstacle of uh, have how to save uh, all the data to the Firebase. This yeah. is the most difficult one. Yeah, if, if, if you look it up, I think there are some videos doing that. I haven't done it, um, but um, that was work in progress, I think. And I think one of the extensions is how to connect to Google Sheets. Look that up. Uh, yes. But uh, the, the question is, is it typing to Google Sheet or retrieving? I think they were able to retrieve from Google Sheet. I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, but 
found. So Codular has uh, all types of databases. There is the Google Sheet and Airtable, okay. Firebase, all of them are there. So I'm going to find the easiest way to connect and save data, and we will take it from there. Perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you so much for your help. No. Thank you so much, Dr. Nadir, for your guidance. Thank you. Anytime. Thank you, of course, and uh, your team. Good work. Good work. Good work. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank